Welcome, my friends, to a new episode of The Strange Crime. Here are 10 royal murders that shocked Europe in the Middle Ages. The royal families of Europe continued to practice merciless killing and hostility in search of absolute power. Assassinations were common, and many medieval tyrants ended their days by failing to repel a sudden knife blow. 10. Eric V. of Denmark in 1286, a mysterious group of Franciscan monks entered the village of Vaindrup. They were heading to the barn where King Eric V of Denmark and his entourage were sleeping after a hunting trip in the local forest. While the hunters were dozing, the killer monks silently entered the barn and stabbed the king to death. In the ensuing confusion, the killers abandoned their monastic garb and made a clean escape. King Eric was an unpopular tyrant who had many enemies, and it was not clear who ordered the killing. In an atmosphere of paranoia, the Danes quickly condemned the nobleman Stig Anderson Vyad, who hated Eric for sleeping with his wife. There was no evidence linking Vyad to the murder, and he refused to submit to such a sentence. Instead, he fled to the island of Helm and became a pirate, raiding and plundering the coast of Denmark until his death seven years later. 9. Alboin. Alboin was king of the Lombards and one of the most powerful and prominent figures in 6th century Europe. It was he who led the Lombards south into Italy, and conquered the north of the country. No one can stand against Alboin on the battlefield. But his brutality backfired on him in the end. Early in his reign, King Cunimund killed the Jepid king and turned his skull into a drinking cup. He then forcibly married Cunemund's daughter, Rosamund. During a drunken feast in June 572, he invited Rosamund to drink happily with her father, and made her sip wine from a skull cup. This was a step too far, and Rosamund immediately began plotting his murder. She disguised herself as a maid and seduced Peridio, Alboin's bodyguard. She then revealed her true identity and threatened to tell Alboin about the affair unless Peridio killed him. Knowing that Alboin would certainly execute him, Peridio agreed and bludgeoned the king to death in his bedchamber, completing Rosamund's revenge. 8. Andrew Hungary When King Robert of Naples died in 1343, the throne passed to his teenage granddaughter Joanna. She was married to her cousin, Prince Andrew of Hungary, and it was expected that he would rule Naples in her name. But Joanna was a ruthlessly assertive young woman who insisted that she was queen and Andrew merely her husband. A bitter political conflict soon broke out between the spouses. The people of Naples supported Joanna, and despised Andrew as a foreigner who surrounded himself with other Hungarians. It was not long before the prince wrote to his mother that he feared for his life. In 1344, Andrew was undressing preparing for bed when armed men burst into the room, beat him severely, and then hung him from the balcony. When the noose failed to strangle him immediately, some of the killers swung by his legs to speed things up. The plan was apparently to hide his body, but Andrew's childhood nurse heard the murder and raised the alarm. Joanna proclaimed her innocence, claiming that she had been sleeping in the next room the whole time. 7. Joanna Naples. Her husband's assassination backfired on Joanna. Andrew's Hungarian relatives immediately invaded Naples, intent on revenge. However, Joanna was a formidable opponent, and eventually regained her kingdom. As it turned out, the Hungarians were just biding their time. In 1380, they enthusiastically supported Joanna's distant relative, Charles Durazzo, who had been given the throne by one of the church's feuding popes. Charles successfully invaded Naples and captured Joanna. But Joanna had one last trick up her sleeve. Before she was arrested, she announced that she would adopt Prince Louis of France and make him her successor. A delighted Louis raised a huge French army to free his new mother, but she was assassinated in 1382 by Charles before the French could reach her. Most accounts say that her Hungarian assassins strangled her, just as Andrew had been strangled. However, Prince Louis's wife, 
Marie, wrote that she was in fact smothered with a feather mattress, to avoid leaving marks on her body. 6. Charles Durazzo After killing Joanna, Charles Durazzo became king of Naples. He helped Louis, king of France, escape death from disease. Since seizing a kingdom from his relative had worked so well the first time, he decided to give it another chance when Louis, king of Hungary, died, and his daughter Mary was taken. The Throne Charles invaded Hungary and succeeded in deporting Mary. But he seriously underestimated Mary's mother, the fearsome Queen Elizabeth of Bosnia. She had already firmly secured Poland for her eldest daughter, Jadwiga, and was now determined to do the same for Mary in Hungary. Elizabeth pretended to welcome Charles, won his trust and was actually with him at Buda Castle when her killer plunged an axe into his neck in 1386. This act led to securing the Hungarian throne for Mary, even though Elizabeth was not there to see it, Charles's wife had her strangled in retaliation. 5. Tsarevich Dmitri Ivan the Terrible was unlucky with his sons. The first drowned as a child when the royal boat capsized. Ivan personally killed the second in a fit of rage. As a result, the throne passed to his third son, Fyodor, who was probably mentally disabled and allowed the regent Boris Godunov to rule on his behalf. This left Ivan's youngest son, Dmitri, as a potential threat to Godunov's power. It was no surprise that the eight-year-old boy was found with a knife to his throat in 1591. Surprisingly, Godunov attempted to claim that Dmitri had accidentally slit his throat brutally after having an epileptic seizure while holding a knife. This is a medically improbable story. It convinced almost no one, especially since an important witness disappeared while on his way to testify. Others accused the Pechevosky family, all of whom were killed in the ensuing riots. Three separate impostors later took control of areas in Russia claiming to be the real Dmitri, and were smuggled away before the murder. 4. Ida Konkabare not all royal murders were politically motivated. Take the case of Ed U.A. Conquebert, who ruled Western Ireland as King of Connet in the early 13th century. According to the Annals of Connet, Ed was murdered while visiting Geoffrey de Mare, the English judge in Ireland, in 1228. As recorded in the Annals, Ed was a popular handsome man who was interested in the ladies. Geoffrey ordered a female servant to bathe his guest, angering her carpenter husband. He seized a wooden axe, broke into the room, and bludgeoned Ide to death in the bathroom. Geoffrey hanged the carpenter the next day, which seems a bit harsh, as the annals record that Geoffrey's son had deliberately made the carpenter jealous, in the hope of getting Ide out of the picture. 3. Good Charles The good Charles became Count of Flanders under tragic circumstances. His cousin, the childless Count Baldwin, was mortally wounded in battle and wanted his title to Charles as he breathed his last. The new Count quickly endeared himself to his subjects through his many charitable works. Unfortunately, Charles also made enemies of the wealthy Irambald family, which had come to power under even more dramatic circumstances. The original Irambald was a slave who served the castle of Bruges, while secretly having an affair with his wife. One day, the castellan was urinating over the side of the boat when Irembold pushed him into the water, where he drowned. Irembold then married his widow and became the new castle. When Irembold's descendants became too powerful, Charles decided to reduce them back to the status of serfs in 1127. This alarmed the Irembolds, who sent their knights to the church where Charles was praying. The knights threw his brains to the ground. Two. Canute IV. Good Charles should have been more careful, for he was the son of King Canute IV of Denmark, who was also murdered in the church by his enemies. But while Charles fell out with a wealthy family, Canute's killers were humble peasants. Canute was a pious man who suppressed paganism and greatly strengthened the power of the Danish church, so much so that he later became a saint. Unfortunately, 
he also demanded that the peasants pay tithes to the church, which angered the people. To make matters worse, the planned invasion of England collapsed due to infighting. By 1086, a general rebellion broke out against his rule. Canute holed up in a church in Odensee, surrounded by his enemies. The praying king was wounded by a spear thrown through the window. Then the rebels broke down the door and killed him with a shower of arrows. 1. Galswintha, Siegbert, and Chilperic. The most brilliant and cruel woman of the 6th century began her life as a slave in the court of the Frankish king Chilperic. Her name was Fredegund, and she quickly caught the king's attention. But Fredegund was unwilling to remain mistress, and Queen Galswintha was soon strangled, and Fredegund took her place as Chilperic's wife. Unfortunately, it was Galswintha's sister Brunhild, wife of Chilperic's brother, Sigbert, who attacked in search of revenge. Sigbert won the battle, but was assassinated in his hour of victory on Fredegund's orders. Fredegund also made numerous attempts on Brunhild's life, though her brave rival survived all of them. Over the next three decades, Fredegund ordered so many murders that it is impossible to list them all here. Her notable victims included most of Chilperic's sons from previous marriages, several bishops and nobles, and possibly Chilperic himself, who was murdered under mysterious circumstances in 584. She also ordered an unsuccessful attempt on the life of King Guntram of Burgundy and forced Brunhild II's husband to commit suicide. But Fredegund was more than just a crazy killer. She boosted her popularity by convincing her husband to reduce taxes. She successfully defended her position after Chilperic's murder, ensuring that her son would succeed to the throne. If you have comments, leave them in the comments. We are waiting for you. We have reached the end of the video. Don't forget to subscribe and activate the bell to receive our next videos.